I wasn't looking for a camera because I wanted a new camera. I was looking for a new camera because I needed a new camera. I wanted to conserve space, put a little money back in the bank, and have one system and one camera that was a jack of all trades and master of all. And people told me, well, that camera doesn't exist. It's never existed. There's no such thing as a perfect camera. So I'm filming this today with the Nikon Z9. It looks like some serious old rig. It looks awkward because everything is going up. I don't have it rigged out perfectly, but Z9 shooting at 4K, 24P. Atomo Shogun. I just need a display. I didn't need a recorder. Tascam XLR adapter. Uh, the only way you can get good audio through this, I'm telling you, the only way I found, and a Rode NTG3 XLR mic. Um, that's what I'm filming with right now. And I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to show you guys how Nikon brought me back to Nikon, how the Z8 brought me to the Z9 and how I couldn't be happier. So let's talk a little bit about this Nikon thing. Uh, back in the day when Nikon first came out with their first digital SLR, the D100, I bought it and I thought it was kind of not very good at the time. It was so basic and slow. But I was excited because it was Nikon's first DSLR at the time. I then went on in life. I ended up acquiring the D2HS, which I loved and shot that thing everywhere. I took so many memories with that camera that are on hard drive vaults as we speak of my son growing up. And even though it was only four megapixels, I was so in love with that camera. I was printing 20 by 30 prints. I had prints all over the house and it was remarkable. Four megapixels, I couldn't believe it at the time. That camera had some warts and issues, but I loved it nonetheless. I then moved on to cameras like the D700 from Nikon, which was a masterpiece at the time. Uh, I had the D3S for a little while, which was at the time the low light champ in that big DSLR body. But looking at the D3S today, it almost looks antiquated. It's, it's old, it doesn't have any of the modern features. And I have to admit, for the last several years, I've been happy as a clam just shooting photographs with my Leica SL2S camera. Before that, it was the Leica SL. Those were two constants in my life. I've had a Leica SL type camera ever since the first one was announced. And recently, I own two SL2Ss, one in the reporter edition, which I showed you guys seven months ago, and a standard black one. Um, and I also had a Sony FX3 that I shot for my various YouTube channels. And I've had that FX3 for two, three years and love that for shooting video, though it wasn't perfect. And there were times that I cursed it, but nothing major, right? But I decided to find one system and one body that could be my memory maker in photos and a camera that could be my video machine without any flaws or problems. I didn't want any autofocus issues, like a SL2S cannot do autofocus for video to save its life. I didn't want any memory card issues. I wanted a more substantial experience in that area. And the FX3, with some of my memory cards, um, I was losing files. Um, I guess I was using older cards, and but these SD cards can get damaged pretty easily. So. I decided to look around and I, I acquired a Canon R3 for a couple of weeks to test out and I was so close to buying that camera. It, it did photo and video well, but then I was like, I don't know if I wanna go back to Canon. Uh, so let me look at the Sony A1. I looked at the Sony A1. I still can't get along with the Sony bodies. I dropped Sony bodies a while back because they just didn't feel comfortable in my hand anymore. These days I like a more substantial camera, which is why I love the SL2S. 
Um, so I didn't care for the A1, even though it's a technological marvel, powerhouse of a camera packed into a tiny body. It fulfills the promise of mirrorless, that original promise of mirrorless, right? Small, smaller than DSLRs. So I didn't really vibe well. It didn't connect with me. The Canon R3 didn't connect with me on that emotional level either. And so I waited it out. I'm like, well, I'll wait a while. And then I kept hearing about the Nikon Z8, Z9. And when the Z9 came out, I tried one for a week with the first version of the firmware, and I thought it was lacking in a couple of ways. So I was like, no, I'll wait. The Z8 came out, and B&H sent me one to review. I reviewed it on the website not so long ago. But when I used that camera, I was amazed by it after a couple of weeks of use. The first week, I was like, I'm not so sure about this having no shutter. I'm not so sure about this lower res EVF. And uh, after a couple of weeks, I started to appreciate the Z8 for what it was doing for me, right? I wasn't looking for a camera because I wanted a new camera. I was looking for a new camera because I needed a new camera. I wanted to conserve space, put a little money back in the bank, and have one system and one camera that was a jack of all trades and master of all. And people told me, well, that camera doesn't exist. It's never existed. There's no such thing as a perfect camera. The Z8 was mighty dang close to a perfect camera for me. Uh, the autofocus for me and my use was just as good as the Sony's. The file quality was fantastic. Uh, the Nikon colors were there that I remember from my times with the older Nikon cameras. The Nikon color signature has kind of remained the same. Um, the the, the overall ruggedness and bigger feel of the body was much like the SL2S, had a place for my finger. And um, the only thing I didn't care for, the only thing that steered me from the Z8 for my use was the battery life. I shoot a lot of video, a lot of 4K 120, and that was eating up the battery in the Z8. But if I was just shooting photos, the Z8 battery would be plenty. But I needed one, a camera without compromise. And somebody was telling me, well, have you tried the Z9 again with version 4 firmware? And they added things such as auto capture. They made the continuous autofocus and tracking more sticky. And so I was like, hmm. When I returned the Z8 to B&H after the review, I just went full forge and I said, I'm going to purchase a Z9 with the latest firmware. And if it's no good or doesn't do what I need, I will send it back for a refund because B&H gives 30 days. Never had a problem with B&H in 30 years of buying from them. Maybe 20, no, 30 years of buying from them. Never had a problem. So the Z8 arrives. I bought a 14 to 24 2.8 lens with it, which is I'm shooting this now with it. Um, and I bought a couple of accessories, and it came with an extra battery for free. B&H has a deal. They'll give you an extra battery. So... Uh, I had to download version 4 firmware. I put it on the camera using the app. It worked fantastic wirelessly from the app. And away I went over the last several weeks taking photos uh, using various lenses. When I shoot photos with the Z9, I like to use manual small lenses. It makes the body light, thin, and a joy to work with. So lenses like the TT Artisans 28 f5.6, which is an absolute beautiful lens. It's a copy of the Leica 28 Sumeron, and it's just as good. Um, I, I've tried both. It's just as good. I paid 260 bucks for the gold version of this lens. I think it's went up since. And I either have that lens on or a lens like the Voigtlander 55 F12, which is an F mount, which I convert to Z mount. I've shot this with the Voigtlander 50 F1, and I've also shot it with some Z mount lenses. But when I'm doing photos, I like the manual focus experience, and that's what I mostly did with the Leica as well. And I gotta say, I like the experience better with the Nikon Z9. It took some time to appreciate, but I much more appreciate the EVF in the Nikon. It's lower resolution than some of the competitors, but it's more fluid, it's smooth. I like the color. It looks more real. Um, what else? I love the battery life of the Z9. Uh, if I was just taking photos, I'd charge it once a month. Uh, if I'm doing video, which I do three times per week, uh, I change, I, I charge the battery a couple times per week, but I have two of them, so it works out. 
Um, I like the rugged feel. I like the larger size of the body. The ergonomics are fantastic. I like the fact you can have the buttons light up in low light environments. Um, it's just an all out beautiful camera. The silent shutter, it's shutterless. There's no shutter. And I applaud Nikon for doing this. Uh, I think that cameras of the future should all be like this. There's no need for a physical shutter in a mirrorless camera. There just isn't, and Nikon has shown this with the Z8 and the Z9. I like the sensor protector that closes down when you turn off the camera, so when you're changing a lens, you're not getting dust in your sensor. I like the physical manual controls. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Z9 and the Z8 are the best cameras I've ever shot with in my life, technically. And for me, ergonomically as well. Uh, shooting memories with the Z9, and I say shooting memories because I have vaults with over 100,000 images over the last 27 years shooting photos. From the time my son was born until today where he's 27 years old, um, he lives across in our guest house right over there. And I have these memories because I always have said a camera is the closest thing we will ever get to a time machine. And uh, when I'm 80, if I'm blessed to live that long, I will go through these images every day and I'll probably shed a tear remembering those special moments that I captured. And, and at that time, it won't matter what camera was used to take them. I won't say, oh, that was a Leica, that was a Canon. It doesn't matter. All I want now is a camera that can do the job for me reliably, what I need, not what I want. And it just so happens the Z9 has turned out to be the best camera I've ever shot with on a technical level as well as an emotional level as well as the enjoyment I get from it. It has instant response. The sensor is fantastic and while it's not the best in low light, we have solutions these days that can control that noise. I was shooting ISO 10K at night. I used Adobe's AI noise reduction and they look beautiful. So AI is changing photography in many ways and it will be changing it much more in the future. I don't know if I'm a fan of all these ways but it's coming so uh, we all should prepare for it, right? Um, what else do I like about the Z9? It was the Z8 that led me to the Z9 and uh, I have no, no regrets, no disappointments. I don't miss my Leica at all. I feel like I've seen the light now and I'm using a modern day camera that can do photos just as well if not better than what I had before and it's doing video better than my Sony FX3. There is one con of the Z9 and the Z8 that had me almost return it for that refund. Um, the audio preamps when you're recording video are downright awful. The worst I've ever heard in this camera and that's a shame because this is a flagship camera. I've heard better preamps in thousand dollar Sony models in lower cost Canon models than I've heard here in the Nikon. For example, if I throw on a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus or a Rode NTG or a uh, Rode Go or a uh, DJI Wireless, any one of those kind of mics and you listen back to the sound, it's noisy, it sounds tinny and thin, it sounds awful. All right, audio test. This is with a Sennheiser MKE 400. This is like $300. And this is the audio you can expect uh, out of the camera with the Nikon Z8 or Z9 with this mic. You heard what my XLR sounded like with the adapter. Now this is the Sennheiser. Now I will put on a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and then we'll try the Rode NTG. I think it's called NTG. So let's try these. All right, this is with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus straight out of the camera on the Z9. It will be the same on the Z8. So this is the Rode NTG uh, straight out of the camera on the Z9. Now let's go back to the video where I was using the XLR adapter with my Rode NTG3, which is an XLR mic. There's workarounds. You have to lower the preamp of the Nikon to three and pump up your volume on the mic to their max, but this also doesn't solve the problem. Your output will be very low. You'll have to jack it up in editing, add some bass frequencies to it, and cut out some noise. So my workaround has, has been to buy the Tascam XLR adapter. 
that uh, plugs into that three and a half millimeter jack. And I still use the Nikon preamps at three, but I have the Tascam set to noon on the volume and it has some pretty powerful preamps in it. So when paired with my Rode NTG3 XLR mic, this is the result in the sound and it sounds just like my FX3 because I used this mic with the FX3. So the workaround saved this camera for me and I'm happy as a clam because I now get to use my same XLR mic. Um, but that is an issue. If you're planning on buying a Z8 or Z9 for talking head or interviews or even YouTube, which they're overkill for YouTube, but if I have it, I'm using it, right? Uh, and it's really not overkill for YouTube these days. People put a lot of production value in their videos today on YouTube, and it's cameras like this that can make that job much easier. Um, but I managed to get rid of three cameras, two systems, get all of this Nikon Z9, the extra battery, the monitor, the mic, the adapter, and I still put $2,800 back in my savings account. And that's pretty amazing because I'm getting an experience I like much better on the photo side and the video side and I saved some money. Now, um, again, I went with what I needed. I wanted to consolidate. I wanted a do-it-all camera without compromise. And the Z9 gave me that. There was a compromise with the audio, but there's a fix if you wanna spend the 400 bucks on the adapter. Um, I had no problem doing that because of the strengths of the camera itself. Now, as I've been talking about it, I've been sharing images with you, all shot with the Z9 and various lenses. I love this camera. Uh, it's, it's my memory maker in the photo world these days. I no longer shoot professionally. I've been there, done that. I had fun, I enjoyed it. I got paid for my photography. What is better than that? These days, I like continuing on with my memories. Um, so when I'm older and look back, I can reconnect with those memories and those special times in my life. For me, that's ultimately what a camera is for. I have no interest in shooting models to test the autofocus. I have no interest in going to a soccer game to shoot soccer to test the autofocus. If it does for me what I need, I will love it. And I have to say, the Z9 is the best camera I've ever used in my life. I prefer it to the Z8 only because of the battery. I prefer it to the Canon R3. I prefer it to the Sony A1. And I've tested them all because these days, if I'm going to invest in something, I wanna test all of the competition that I can and pick what speaks to my heart and speaks to me on an emotional level. I do that with audio and I do that with photo uh, cameras these days. And I haven't upgraded my camera in years. I've had the SL2S, before that the SL, and those were my mainstays, right? And the FX3 for the last three years for video. Um, this, I'm excited about this camera. I take it with me everywhere with those little lenses and I'm making memories. And I've shot more with the Z9 in the past six weeks than I have with my SL2S in the last year. So my Leicas are gone, I sold them. The Sony is gone, I sold it. The lenses, accessories. I have extra money in the bank and I have a camera I like better that does it all. And really it is a master of all. So that was why I switched to the Nikon. It was the Z8 that led me back to the Z9. And once I used it, there was no going back. And I will say, uh, if you use a camera like the Z9, if you're a hobbyist or enthusiast, I'm not talking to pros here because you guys know better than me. Um, it's a camera that can suck you into it after about a week of use. Once you get used to it and realize all that it can do. And that's what it did for me and there was no way I could have sent it back or got rid of it. Uh, there's no other camera I'm interested in today, so uh, I'm hoping that the Z9 will last me for many years of making videos and many more years of making memories on the photo side. I love this camera so much, I told Debbie if I were rich and had the money, I'd buy two so I can just keep one on the tripod for this and keep one in the Jeep with a small lens on it to take photos. That's how much I love this camera. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at why I switched to the Nikon Z9. And uh, yeah, that's about all I can say. I love everything about it. I don't really see any cons beside the audio preamps. And uh, for me, weight isn't a con because when I'm out with it taking photos, I use small lenses and it feels lighter than my Leica SL2 did. So uh, that's a pro all the way around. 
great camera and thank you guys for watching. I'll have more reviews coming up soon. If you want to see lens reviews, like adapted lenses even on the Nikon, let me know. I don't know how many have interest in that. I know most people here these days are into the hi-fi reviews. Uh, that's what I've been focusing on for the last couple of years, but I can bring back cameras if you guys want to see it. There's so many great reviewers out there today that I really can't compete with, but um, all I can do is tell you words from the heart and share my, uh, you know, personal photos with what I'm doing. So I love you all. I thank you all. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.